Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video will be about hydrophobic and hydrophilic amino acids. As a general overview, we will cover the following topics in this video. A brief rundown of amino acids, the two methods of classifying amino acids, what makes a molecule hydrophobic or hydrophilic, polarity and solubility, polarity, hydrophilicity and amino acids, hydrophobic amino acids, hydrophilic amino acids, and the unique cases of cysteine and tyrosine. If you want to skip to a specific part, you can do so by clicking the timestamps found in the description section below. A brief intro to amino acids. It's are the building blocks of proteins. All amino acids follow the same basic structure. They contain a central carbon atom, often called the alpha carbon, an amino group, a carboxylic group, a hydrogen atom, and a side chain. The side chain is often called the R group. There are many types of amino acids, some of which do not follow the basic structure. Some are not encoded by the genetic code, and some are not included as building blocks of proteins. For the purposes of the MCAT and most undergraduate programs, we will only be required to learn the 20 proteogenic alpha amino acids. These 20 proteogenic amino acids can be categorized based on two traits. I explained these in a previous video, but as a quick rundown, these are the categorization methods. Categorization method one is based on the nature of the R groups. As such, the amino acids are divided into one of five categories, nonpolar aliphatic amino acids, aromatic amino acids, polar amino acids, acidic or negatively charged amino acids, and basic or positively charged amino acids. Categorization method two is based on the affinity for water. As such, the amino acids are divided into one of two categories, hydrophobic amino acids and hydrophilic amino acids. This video explores the second categorization method. If you want to learn about how amino acids are divided based on the nature of their R groups, please click the card on the top right hand corner. This will take you to that video. Hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity. This trait looks at how any molecule, including amino acids, interact with water. In other words, it looks at their affinity for water. Let's first clarify the two important terms, hydrophobic molecules and hydrophilic molecules. Hydrophobic molecules are water-fearing. Hydro means water and phobic means afraid. Hence, these amino acids avoid interacting with water. Hydrophilic molecules are water-loving. Hydro again means water and philic means loving. Hence, these molecules love to interact with water. What makes a molecule water-fearing or water-loving? The answer is polarity. Before we get into categorizing amino acids as hydrophilic or hydrophobic, let's first understand what polarity is and how it relates to hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity. A polar molecule has two ends. One end is slightly positive and the other is slightly negative. This is due to the difference in electronegativity of the two atoms involved. If there is no difference in electronegativity, or if the difference cancels out, then the bond or the entire molecule, basically the net electronegativity difference of the entire molecule is zero and therefore is considered nonpolar. Nonpolar molecules therefore does not have the slight positive end and negative end to a bond or a molecule. Scientists have worked really hard to identify and assign numerical values to quantify the electronegativity of each element. You can see them here. If you look at the trend, you see that as you go across the periodic table towards the right-hand side, the electronegativity of elements increase. And if you go down the periodic table, 
the electronegativity of elements decrease. Knowing this will help you in most biochemistry questions in general. We are not required to memorize the electronegativity numbers for the MCAT or for most undergraduate level exams. However, it is possible that they would give you these numbers and ask you to calculate the electronegativity and or whether a bond is polar or negative, nonpolar. There aren't any hard and fast rules about the exact electronegativity difference needed to categorize a bond or a molecule as polar or nonpolar. Therefore, we use the following rule of thumb. If the electronegativity difference is less than 0.5, the type of interaction or the type of bond is nonpolar. If it is between 0.5 and 1.7, it is considered polar. And if the electronegativity difference is more than 1.7, then it is considered an ionic interaction. Please note that these cutoffs are subjective. There may be slight differences based on the publication you search for. However, for the MCAT, these numbers are sufficient enough. So why is polarity important? Why does it matter and how does it relate to amino acids? It's because it affects solubility. Do you remember the phrase like dissolves like? Yeah, we all learned that in our organic chemistry classes. This phrase is often used to explain the solubility of organic compounds. And this is what underlies how we categorize amino acids as hydrophilic and hydrophobic. The phrase implies that polar solutes dissolve in polar solvents and nonpolar solutes dissolve in nonpolar solvents. Since we're talking about hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity, our solvent of interest is water. Water is a polar solvent, and therefore, any amino acid that dissolves in water is also polar and is hydrophilic. Those that do not dissolve in water are nonpolar and therefore is hydrophobic. An amino acid's affinity for water and therefore its solubility is determined based on its side chain. If the side chain is polar, then the amino acid is polar. And if the side chain is nonpolar, then the amino acid also is nonpolar. Therefore, the rule of thumb is that if an amino acid is polar, then it is considered hydrophilic. If the amino acid is nonpolar, then it is considered hydrophobic. Remember though, there are slight nuances to this that I will explore at the end of this video. What is the reason behind like dissolves like? Why do polar solutes only dissolve in polar solvents and vice versa? This is because of intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces form between molecules. They exist in solutes between solute molecules and solvents between solvent molecules. Let's consider a polar solute dissolving in a polar solvent. The solute would be X and the solvent would be Y. When they are separate, the polar solute X interacts with other X molecules. The same applies to Y. This is what holds them together. These interactions that hold them together are called intermolecular forces or attractions. There are several types of intermolecular forces, but the most important ones are the following. Dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonds. These interactions are present when there are more than one molecule present, hence the name intermolecular. You need at least two molecules to have a interaction or force between the two intermolecular. In order for a solute to be dissolved in a solvent, the intermolecular attractions between the solute molecule and a solvent molecule 
must be possible and the interaction must at least be likely as the already existing intermolecular forces between the solute molecules. So for an example, the interaction between a solute molecule of X and a solute molecule of Y should be at minimum as likely as the interaction already existing between two X solute molecules and two Y solvent molecules. If the interactions are as likely as those interactions, then X would dissolve in Y. Now let's go to the hydrophobic and hydrophilic amino acids. Hydrophobic amino acids. These amino acids are hydrophobic because they contain side chains that are nonpolar overall. The amino acids that fall under this category include the following. Glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, methionine, proline, cysteine, tryptophan, phenylalanine, and tyrosine. Of these 11 amino acids, the last three are aromatic. If you want to learn more about their structure, click the card on the top right-hand corner. Hydrophilic amino acids. These amino acids are hydrophilic because they contain side chains that are polar overall. They include aspartic acid, glutamic acid, lysine, arginine, histamine, serine, threonine, asparagine, and glutamine. Now let's consider the two unique cases of cysteine and tyrosine. You may have noticed that cysteine and tyrosine, amino acids with side chains that contain polar bonds, are categorized as hydrophobic amino acids. These are the reasons why. Let's start with cysteine. The cysteine amino acid has a sulfohydryl group. This is an SH group. This group contains a sulfur atom covalently bonded to a hydrogen atom. The sulfur atom has an electronegativity of 2.58, while the hydrogen atom has an electronegativity of 2.20 making the electronegativity difference 0.28. This electronegativity difference is what we use to identify if, bonds, if a bond is polar or not. Because there is only a slight difference, there will only be a slight polarity. The sulfur atom will slightly pull more of the shared electrons towards itself, making it slightly negative and making the hydrogen slightly positive. However, because of the classification system provided above, cysteine is grouped as a nonpolar hydrophobic amino acid. This is because the electronegativity difference is less than 0.5. And because of this, cysteine is not polar enough in order to compete with the intermolecular forces already existing in the water in order to be able to be dissolved in water. Tyrosine. Tyrosine is an amino acid that has a hydroxyl group in its R group. The hydroxyl group contains an oxygen atom that is covalently bonded to a hydrogen atom. These are usually polar bonds. The oxygen atom has an electronegativity of 3.44, while the hydrogen atom has an electronegativity of 2.20. This makes their electronegativity difference 1.25. And according to the table, the classification system we used, this would be considered highly polar because it falls under the category of the difference, the electronegativity difference being between 0.5 and 1.7. But why do we categorize this as a hydrophobic amino acid? Why don't we consider it a polar 
and therefore hydrophilic amino acid. This is because the OH group is attached to a benzene ring. Benzene rings are comparatively large hydrophobic groups which counteract the hydrophilicity of the OH group, making the entire tyrosine molecule slightly more hydrophobic. And that's it. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please comment them down below. If this was helpful for you, please make sure to subscribe and like as that really helps out the channel. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.